Hello, my name is Jenna Goddard, and I'm the Writing Center Coordinator at Thompson Rivers University. Academic reading can be so tough, so today I'm going to share some strategies for accessing academic material. First, I'd like to acknowledge that Thompson Rivers University is situated on the traditional lands of the Tecumlups to Shikwetmik within Shikwetmikulu. I always like to start off with a self-introduction. So again, my name is Jenna Goddard. I'm the Writing Center Coordinator, and I also teach student success courses at TRU. I also love anything to do with the outdoors, particularly mountain biking and mountaineering. So today, I'll start off by sharing some academic supports for your reading. I'll introduce you to the concept of muscle reading, and I'll break it down into three phases, what you do before your reading, what you do during, and what you do after. Then I'll chat about some strategies for highlighting your text more effectively, and share some academic reading tips for when reading gets really tough. I always like to let students know about the academic supports available to them. You can access early alert for some strategies for academic reading. You can book a counseling appointment because they also provide academic support. You can book an appointment through something called a peer academic coach through the Writing Center. You can take Student Success 1030, which is a plug for my own class. If you have a documented learning disability, you can access accessibility services. And I always recommend to students that they ask their instructor. If you chat with your instructor during an office hour, they might be able to give you some strategies for managing their big reading lists. So Dave Ellis in his fabulous book on becoming a master student talks about something called muscle reading. And I ask students typically what they think about when they hear this phrase, muscle reading. And a lot of them suggest, oh, it sounds like it's tough. And then I ask them to think about when they build muscles. And typically they answer, you know, at the gym. So your brain is kind of like that. The harder you work, the more results you're going to see. And that's the same with academic reading. So first, I'll chat about phase one. Pry out questions is an easy way to remember what phase one is. Phase two, root up answers is an easy way to remember. And for phase three, recite, review, and review again. And that's no different from what it actually is. I just couldn't think of a way to make it easier to remember. I find it get fairly repetitive when it comes to participation. In all things related to being a successful student, participation matters. Whether you're sitting in the classroom and asking questions or asking them in your head if you don't feel comfortable speaking out loud. But even when you're studying or reading on your own, participation does count. By participation, I mean making your learning as active as possible. So you're so that you're participating in the learning rather than being a passive recipient of information. And this looks different depending on the exercise. So when it comes to academic reading, it means that you're critically thinking about the material as you're reading it. It means that you're thinking out loud or asking yourself questions or annotating your textbook. But I'll get into that a little bit later. When I ask students what they struggle with when it comes to reading academic material, I hear a lot of the same answers. A lot of students find it challenging to concentrate while they're reading academic material because it's not always the most exciting. So they lose focus quickly. I also commonly hear that students will get to the end of a page and remember nothing that they just read. So I hope the strategies I'm about to share will help you with these challenges. 
So again, an easy way to remember phase one is to remember the phrase pry out questions. This is what you're going to do before you even start reading. The first step is to preview the information. That just means take a look at what you're about to read. Is it a chapter in a textbook? Is it an academic article? Not only do you get a sense of how long it is and how long it will take you, it helps you clarify your purpose. So you're going to be looking for things like summary statements at the end or headings or ideas that you might already be familiar with or sometimes drawings and graphs. The second stage of phase one is about creating an outline. Writing down an outline helps you understand the structure and to clarify your thoughts. Often, textbooks will have their own outline at the beginning, so you can use that or you can write down your own. I encourage you to note down the main headings and some key points associated with those. The third step in phase one is about waking your brain up and you do this through something called questioning. So now that you have a sense of what you're about to read, ask yourself questions about it. Things like, what do I already know about this topic? What does this term mean? How does this concept relate to another concept I've learned in another class? Asking yourself creative questions helps with that participation piece. It means you're actively engaging with the material, you're curious about it, and you're thinking critically about it. An easy way to remember phase two of muscle reading is thinking about the phrase, root up answers. Phase two refers to the actual reading stage of academic reading. As you pass through the material for the first time, think about what you already know about the topic. When it comes to academic reading, it's tough to remain focused for longer than 30 minutes. So get a sense of how long you can focus and retain information and schedule breaks every 20 to 30 minutes. Don't try for those marathon reading sessions where you're reading for hours at a time. You won't retain the information and you'll give yourself a headache. You might also want to try the reward system, whatever that is. So I had a student who just loved candy gummy worms. So at the end of every single page that she finished, she placed a gummy worm. That was her reward system. In terms of staying focused while you're reading, you might want to try things like visualizing the material. So taking a break from the page to think about what it would look like. Also, try reading out loud because that engages your other senses. Or imagine what it would be like to feel the subject. These are some strategies that help you approach the reading from different perspective and engage your different senses. After you've read the material through one time, then it's time to go back and underline. Remember, you don't want to underline too much you're only going to highlight the important concepts. If you underline the majority of the page, it kind of defeats the purpose of highlighting important concepts. Underlining is great because it involves your kinesthetic learning, again, making the learning more active. The third step in phase two is about answering the questions that you asked yourself in phase one. Go back to that outline that you created and fill in the details. That way you'll be able to really clearly notice any gaps in your knowledge. Finally, write down any new questions that you still have about the material. So phase three is about recitation and review. 
You'll hear me say this in a lot of my presentations and videos, but talking to yourself is a great technique for retaining information. It helps you clarify and organize information. If you feel a bit too weird talking to yourself, then you can use a classmate and discuss the material. Rather than reciting all the information that you learned, make conscious decisions about what was the most important information and create mini summaries. If you've experienced that challenge where you read a chapter and you think, "Ugh, I retained nothing from this, try giving yourself a speech about it. You'll often surprise yourself in that you've retained more than you actually think. This is a form of metacognition or thinking about thinking, and it's called synthesis. So you may not be conscious of how much information you've retained. But you'll notice when you give yourself a speech. Okay, if you take away one tip from this presentation, I really hope it's this. Review new information within 24 hours. There's kind of this magic time period in which to review new information so that it doesn't just disappear from your brain and you have to relearn it again before the midterm or the final. And that time period is typically about 24 hours. So if you can review the reading either before you go to bed or the next morning when you wake up, you'll find that those concepts are much clearer. Review material regularly, either weekly or monthly, hopefully both. What you're doing is keeping those neural pathways in your brain open. It's so much easier to recall again on a midterm and a final if you've reviewed material regularly rather than having those marathon cram sessions. Okay, so if you're like me, you have like 10 different colored highlighters and you love to use them and make your page look pretty. That is fantastic, but also totally useless. So highlighting can be a really powerful tool when it's used appropriately, but it is not effective if you have more than 10% of the page highlighted. So never highlight the first time you're reading academic material. You'll find you highlight too much of the page. Instead, read it first and then go back to underline or highlight. Think of highlighting as a way to monitor your comprehension or to check in with how much you've understood. Think critically about the material. What do you know? What do you think will be on the exam? Always read carefully first. So make two or even three passes through a difficult section before bringing out that highlighter. And then think critically. Make choices about what to highlight. Again, you don't need to highlight extraneous information or details. You're just highlighting the main ideas. One good idea is to look at the questions you asked yourself in step three of phase one of muscle reading. If you've asked yourself a question about the material, chances are it's important and you should know it. Along the same lines of reading several times first, I encourage you to also recite the material first. Read it out loud and talk to yourself before bringing out the highlighter. It's also a good idea to lightly underline in pencil before you make the decision to highlight the page. It means that you're really thinking about the material in terms of what is most important and what should be highlighted. So here are some tips for you if you're finding that academic reading is becoming really tough. Take some pressure off yourself. Don't expect to be able to understand or retain it all after one reading. Academic material is typically fairly dense and might take two or three readings before you fully comprehend it. Instead of getting mired down in all of the language, look for those essential words or key terms. After each section break or chapter, create mini reviews so that you're summarizing and synthesizing as you're reading. For maybe the sixth time this presentation, try reading it out loud. You'll really notice a difference. And while you're at it, try walking around as you're reading it as well. 
Try talking to your instructor about the material. Again, this helps with the synthesis process. And they can answer any questions that you haven't been able to answer in your reading. Sometimes changing the environment really helps. So stand up, go to another room, maybe go to a coffee shop, go to the library. So try a different position or environment and then tackle it again. When I say skip around, I don't mean like physically around your house. I mean skip around the reading. So for example, if you're reading a chapter in a textbook, you don't have to read it in the way it's laid out. Some students really like to go to the end first and read the summary or the conclusion. This often gives you a bigger picture of where you're going in the reading and can help you make sense of the steps along the way. Sometimes it really helps to have another perspective or another person explain things a little bit differently. Supplemental learning leaders can often do this for you, or you might want to consider getting a tutor. If you find reading particularly tough, you might want to try another format. Students sometimes find that if they go to YouTube and find a video on the same topic and watch that video, when they go back to the text, it makes much more sense. So figure out how you like to learn and then utilize that alternative format in addition to your reading. Explaining material to yourself or to others is a great way to understand it thoroughly. Even if you don't feel like you've comprehended the material, pretend that you understand and then explain it. It will engage your brain and again make the reading process a bit more active. Throughout the text, stop and ask yourself, what's going on here? This reminds you to take a break and make those mini summaries. It also encourages your brain to think critically about the material to make sure that you're understanding it. And finally, it's so important to schedule those breaks. Make sure that you're giving your eyes and your brain a break every 20 to 30 minutes. I remember being a student and sometimes looking at a seemingly endless stack of weekly readings. And it seemed so overwhelming and so disheartening. I like this quote because it can apply to small things, like your stack of reading, as well as bigger things. But for any task, it always seems impossible until it's done. And you feel so good when that reading is done. I encourage you to check out Dave Ellis's text on becoming a master student. You'll find more tips for academic reading as well as other study skills. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos on study skills and academic writing.